Welcome to Yard Talk. I'm Doug. Hi, I'm Greg. I'm a trained landscape architect and I believe in strong design. I'm a born naturalist and I think that good design can create great backyard wildlife habitat. As you'll see, we sometimes look at gardens in different ways. But we both agree that the natural approach to lawn and garden care is the best. We're here to answer some of the many questions we hear from homeowners all over King County who call in to the Natural Lawn and Garden Hotline. We'll show you cutting edge techniques to save you time and money without poisoning our children, our pets, or the environment. This is the King County Parks Greenhouse and Nursery near Maple Valley. Each year, over 25,000 plants are grown here to green up our parks, shade our streams, and make this county a healthy place to live. This greenhouse also provides working opportunities for people with disabilities. The crews out here are very hard workers and the program has been a national model for supported employment since 1987. Hey, nice. High school kids from around the region also volunteer their time to help care for the plants. Another really cool part of this nursery is that it is largely built from recycled materials. From old parts of the kingdom for the road base to old soccer goals for the shade houses, Many things considered garbage find new homes at the King County Parks Nursery. Well, Greg and I have a little spring fever today, and we'd like to show you how to have a beautiful, lush summer lawn without harmful chemicals or pesticides like weed and feed. You don't need to use any of that stuff on your grass. Instead, we'll give you tips and tricks that'll help you create a beautiful yard that will be the envy of all your neighbors, and you won't have to worry about your kids or pets tracking all those pesticides into your home. <laughs> Tune up your lawn the natural way. Most of us in the spring start looking at our winter beaten, bedraggled lawns and want to just give up. Excessive winter rain combined with poor soils, over fertilization in summer can lead to what we call lawnus compactitis, or compaction for short. Compaction is the result of a vicious cycle that repeats itself in lawns throughout our region. But there are solutions. What happens is, sopping winter rain loads our mostly clay soils, often rotting out the lower layer of grass. Walking, working, and playing on wet grass only compounds the problem. In the spring and summer, we over-fertilize the grass, trying to get it back in shape. Grass fertilized with quick-release fertilizers grows short, ultra-thick roots, which prevent water, air, and nutrients from filtering back down into the root zone when it needs it most in the spring. The results are unhealthy lawns with bare areas that become a welcome mat for weeds. Folks then panic, over fertilize again, and start the cycle anew. It really doesn't work. We can help you break that cycle. A spring routine of aeration combined with overseeding and a nice top dressing of mulch will really make your yard look fantastic. Come on, I'll show you how. <laughs> simple recipe for the lawn of your dreams. Aerate, reseed, and then finish with the top dressing of compost. So while Greg gets the aerator ready, I like to let him do the hard work. Let's talk a little bit about fertilizers. What you want is a slow release organic fertilizer applied twice a year. Once, beginning of May, second, late September. Slow release organic fertilizers dissolve slowly over time, helping the roots grow longer and stronger, reaching for deep water in the summer and better able to stand the soggy conditions in the winter. Avoid chemical fertilizers because when they get wet, they dissolve instantly, creating the short, thick roots of thatch. How do you know if you have thatch? Take a slice of lawn. Look at how long or short your roots are. Smell the soil. Does it smell sweet and earthy? Lawns that have had weed and feed or other chemicals will have an almost petroleum smell. Does the slice move freely in your hand? Is there a deep organic soil? Or is the good soil shallow with hard clay, sand, and gravel below? Whether you have thatch or poor soil, the first method of rehab for your lawn is aeration. Do you think he really knows how to drive that thing? Greg is using an aeration machine. You can easily rent one for a few hours from your local tool rental store. You can always split the cost with a neighbor. You may want to run the aerator all over the lawn, maybe several times if it hasn't been done in a while. 
Now with these uh, plugs that resemble goose droppings, you can go ahead and break those up with a rake over your grass or let the rain do it naturally. Or if you really don't want them around your lawn, you can rake them up and go ahead and compost them. I like to, I'm kind of a lazy gardener. I like to just let them be and let the rain take care of them. After aerating, it's a good idea to spread new seed over the area to fill patchy spots. Whether you reseed or not, add a half inch or so of fresh, fine compost and rake it in. This will help fill in the holes and build a healthier soil profile for new grass. Once again, your healthy lawn prescription starts with a springtime regimen of aeration to break up thatch and improve the soil, new grass seed, a northwest mix works best, and then finish with a 1 8 to quarter inch top dressing of compost. And avoid those chemical quick release fertilizers. Opt for organic slow release fertilizers instead. It promotes deeper, healthier, longer roots for your grass. So let's talk about weed and feed. When you use a weed and feed product on your lawn, you're using a serious pesticide and an unnecessary quick release fertilizer. Think about it. You're putting herbicides on every inch of your lawn, even if you only have a few dandelions. Many professional landscapers don't like weed and feed products because they waste money on using chemicals where they aren't needed. Healthy lawns grow on healthy soil. Earthworms and microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi keep the soil healthy. Overuse of pesticides and quick release fertilizers can seriously harm the health of your soil and increase lawn disease. This makes it much harder to grow a green lawn without relying on chemicals. So your lawn's looking better. So how about some new plants? We'll show you how to propagate new plants from cuttings. Hi, we're here in the King County Parks greenhouse and I'm joined here by my friends who are the staff out here. We have Shantae, Jake, and Jamie. And today we're gonna make some free plants. I get lots of questions about where can I get some plants for cheap or free? Well, making your own from cuttings is a really easy way to do. Not all species propagate from cuttings well, but many do. In this case, we're using a red osier dogwood, which is a beautiful shrub. It has a nice reddish bark, and it grows easily from cuttings. Really easy. We're going to make a whole bunch of plants from some of these prunings that were just taken from another, another shrub. It's really easy to do. You want to go ahead and cut off a length. In this case, we're going to go ahead and cut off about, oh, about 12 inches. This one has a little bit of a curve to it, but you know what? Doesn't matter. The important part is that you want to be sure that you have these little nodes, which is where the branches join. And you'll see there's little leaf ones here. You want to have a couple of them below the soil surface in the pot and a couple above, because those will grow your roots and your new branches. Then all you do is making sure you remembered which side was up, and then you just stick it in a pot full of dirt. We're going to go ahead and get this soil nice and moist, and we're going to keep it moist. In no time at all, the shrub will start to leaf out, and you'll have be growing a new plant. This is a really easy process to do, and it's a great way to get lots of plants for really cheap. Cut new growth stems in late winter or early spring for best survival, although with red osier dogwood, it will work just about any time of year. Make sure you plant the right side up in a pot of potting soil. You want to be sure those leaf or branch buds are above the soil. Keep the soil in the pots moist. Keep them potted for at least one growing season before planting them out into your yard. Well, we've shared all our secret tips today with you. and. We know that people learn their yard care techniques from their friends and their neighbors. I learned from my grandpa. And it's a good idea to try these techniques out for yourself and share them with your neighbors. A great way of sharing this information is by sending them a link of our website, which has all these videos streaming online. And then they'll learn the same natural yard care tips that you have learned by watching this program. If you have a lawn or gardening question, call our natural yard care hotline at 206 6330224 or send us an email at info at lawnandgardenhotline.org. We'll be glad to help and show you why gardening the natural way is an easy and healthy choice.